All right, howdy folks. Welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. Uh, I've had a couple of requests for me to go over what my light box looks like and how I do the blue LED lightning. So uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is show you exactly what my light box looks like, where I got the materials from, and you know, kind of show you how to set one up yourself. Uh, before I do that, I want to do two things, one of which is to remind everybody that all the details for this are really laid out in great detail as well as all of the procedures that you want to follow here uh, are in the Captain Mike Stain Removal and Whitening book and so be sure to check that out. Grab a copy. If you go directly to the Captain Mike comic book pressing webpage you can get a nice discount on buying it so I encourage you to do that. Um, the second of which is please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Uh, leave, leave a comment you know give me a thumbs up here but I genuinely appreciate those subscribers and so let's just uh, keep the number of subscriptions going on up. So one more plea here just click the subscribe button button down below uh, on your window. All right, so with that, you know, the core of doing this are going to be the blue LED lights. And um, I've uh, given in uh, a whole separate video on where I got the idea to use these light bulbs from and the full details on that. So there's a whole separate video. I'll drop that in the description so you'll be able to link to that. If not, it'll be, you know, just scroll through my YouTube channel and you'll be able to find it. Um, my light box consists of two of those bulbs. And uh, I don't want to, you know, do any wiring myself. I mean, I could do electrical work, but honestly, why risk shorting something or electrocuting myself? Uh, what I have here is a plastic hookup, um, and you can just directly hook these bulbs into it. And then this goes directly into, you know, a normal outlet fitting. So um, I think that this wire with the switch in the middle, and it does have a switch here, so you can toggle on and off there manually if you want. I have them toggled on the on position at all times. Um, but, you know, there's really no reason to do any wiring yourself. You can just buy the bulb. Uh, it's the bulb recommended in the Captain Mike book. Uh, if you go to the Captain Mike webpage, there's a products link. There's an Amazon affiliate set up to give you what these sockets are. But it's really just a standard light fitting with a cord that plugs in. And I think they cost like $8. So they're like really not expensive. And I don't know why you would do any electrical work yourself, given how simple this is to just literally buy a cord with an outlet and screw the bulbs in. So I've got two of those I put in my light box. The reason I use two of these is because these obviously are circular so they're going to give a, off a cone and if you overlap two cones you can get a loose rectangle and that's what I think we want the, uh, the overall light distribution to look like. Now these light uh, plugs I have hooked into this little black box. This little black box is for uh, Christmas decorations so it's an outdoor light controller and what's really cool about it is it comes with the remote control. I, I got it off of Amazon so just put you know automated light switch or programmable light switch. You can set it for two, four, six, eight hours, leave it on or uh, turn it off. And what's fun about this then is I can plug this into an outlet and uh, you know hit the hit the light button and they'll turn on and they'll turn off and they'll turn on uh, and they'll turn off. Okay, and so it's kind of nice. You can do that from a distance. So when I set my box up, I get all of them going um, and then I go to the room, shut the door, click the remotes and uh, all the light boxes turn on. And so it's pretty convenient. I can also set it up before I leave for work in the morning. So I get my box going, I click the two hour button and it'll turn off while I'm at work automatically. And so that makes it really awesome. Uh, all of my light treatments are gonna be two hours because that's what the remote has. So I know that the book has some that you can do at one hour, some that you can do at 90 minutes. Uh, everything I do is two hours because that's what the remote control is. I'll also set it up before I go to bed and so it helps with some efficiency uh, in that regard. So the actual box itself is just straight up a, uh, a, a rubber tote. So I know that a lot of people ask, does it have to be some special rubber tote? And the answer is nope. Um, I have three light boxes and all of them are a different tote because when we moved, we happened to have a bunch of plastic storage bins. And so since then, I've made a couple of trips to Goodwill instead of buying uh, new totes. I just emptied out some that we already had. Now, the important parameter is going to be the distance of the lights to your comic book on the inside. And because all of my light boxes are slightly different height, I have slightly different stuff on the inside to keep prop up that comic book. Um, in this particular case, I happen to have Ziploc throwaway containers. And so in my light box, I happen to have uh, four of those sitting on the bottom. And that makes a pretty good raise up. And so if I put the lights on top there, I can measure a critical distance. And I would say you wanna be between 10 and 12 inches. 
And so if I put this tape measure on the bottom of the bucket, it comes in at about 15 inches. And so that's too deep. I don't want the comic on the bottom of this. That's over a foot. But if I put it on top of those Ziploc containers, it comes in at a pretty darn near 11 inches, which is smack dab between the 10 and the 12 inches. Now you might ask um, why 10 or 12 inches instead of a closer distance or a further distance. Well, if you put that light right on top of the comic book, one, uh, your cone's not gonna cover the whole book. So you need it up sufficiently far so that you can have a nice distribution of light over the top of it. Um, the second thing is that the bulbs, even if they're LEDs and they don't give out a lot of heat, they do give out some heat. Um, and that heat is gonna do two things. Um, one of which is it's going to uh, distort or warp the cover of the book. And, and that'll happen even if you do it without any humidity, just because the lights are gonna um, give out heat and that's gonna change the both the temperature and the humidity in the box. And so I have a couple of these little square uh, uh, boxes I got off of Amazon and they have a temperature and a relative humidity reading on them. Uh, th those two are on the Captain Mike affiliate page. So if you scroll down, you can find uh, those as a tool. They come as a four pack for like 10 bucks. They're really not expensive. Um, and I, I just drop one of those in the light boxes and you'll see that the relative humidity in the room and the temperature in the room is uh, different than what's actually in the box when you're done uh, irradiating. So you just wanna keep that in mind. Um, and that 10 to 12 inches seems to be the kind of the sweet spot between, you know, if, if the light's really, really high, you're not gonna have any effect from the um, temperature, but you're gonna have minimal effect from the light because a lot of the light's gonna spread out in other areas. And so, you know, at about that 10 to 12 inches, it's not rocket science, it doesn't have to be super uh, precise, but somewhere in that range is a good spot to be able to make sure you're getting intense light on the comic book and uh, not putting too much heat or or too big, huge of a change of humidity there. So uh, that that is kind of the logic there between that 10 to 12 inches. And in this particular case, these happen to fit. It doesn't really matter what it is, just, just load it on up. All right, so on the inside of my box, I have aluminum foil uh, tape. Um, and this is one of these things that was crowds crowdsourced. So when the book launched originally, the whole team was recommending to cover the, the interior of the box in aluminum foil. Well, it turns out aluminum foil, if you hit it or knock it, it falls over, it crinkles up a little bit, it tears pretty easy. It was kind of obnoxious. Uh, and so somebody in the Captain Mike Facebook group whose name I could not re relocate. And so I apologize to that individual because I can't remember what it was. Uh, importantly, though, it wasn't my idea um, to just to use this uh, kind of reflecting tape. And, uh, you know, th there's a lot of that. Some of this is for duct work and some of it is called reflecting tape for, for the side of the road. So there's a couple of different makes for that. I, I got a whole roll at Lowe's and that was enough to uh, kind of tape the interior of this box. It was tedious. It took a couple of hours to actually get all of the tape to lay pretty smooth on the interior. All right. So um, when doing these uh, procedures, I always use uh, a clear plastic CGC slab case. So that's what this is here. Um, uh, I crack enough CGC slabs where I have a whole bunch of these. Um, honest to goodness, you know, if you can't come up with one of these on your own and you really want one, shoot me an email or a message and I'll mail you a couple for the, the cost of shipping, assuming I have extras because I, I throw them away because uh, I've got good enough back stock. But I use them for trays in my pressing room. You know, if I get a couple of clients books, I'll put those on one tray with their, their invoice and I kind of keep things straight that way. Uh, but I also use these in the box. Uh, I've seen pictures of people opening these up at the centerfold and taking uh, or treating the book kind of flattened out like so. Um, that makes me cringe a little bit. Uh, I don't recommend that and I don't recommend that for two reasons. Um, one of which is I think it puts undue stress on the staples in the spine, uh, particularly if you're going to be using misting or overlay, you're going to be putting humidity in that area and you're going to be expanding that paper and contracting it. And uh, I've seen some staple damage when I've tried to do that. The other of which is that it gives the book kind of an unnatural distribution of aging. So if you're taking a Silver Age book and you're doing this, uh, comic books age from the exterior where it's exposed to the environment inside. And so often you'll get edge tanning and in the middle it might be a, a cream color. And if you're going to whiten from here, you're going to do more whitening along the spine than you are along the edges. And that's going to give it an unnatural outcome. Uh, and I think some of the purple labels that CGC has given out have been because, you know, the spine might be perfectly white and the other three edges uh, have some kind of cream or off-white color to them. And that's just not a natural outcome for the book. So I think if you want to maintain Maintain that natural perimeter, you have to have your uh, book be treated most intensely in the middle and less so on the perimeters. 
uh, and definitely not doubling up the, the effect on the spine. And so because of that, I always treat my books uh, on, you know, one, one cover and then I'll flip it on over and do the other cover. And uh, that is slower and it does take more time, but I think it gives both a more natural outcome and a more natural result. So uh, once we have the box put together and throw the comic book inside, then I have to get the lights going. Um, I uh, have diverged from the recommended instructions. So the recommended instructions in this are to use a lid and, and prop it up with some binder clips. And uh, then they have drilled holes in the side to control the humidity. And the reason for that is if you're putting in uh, misting spray or overlays, there can be a good amount of moisture in there. And uh, all that moisture has to go somewhere. And you don't want it to accumulate in the box because if you do that, you can build up a really high humidity and a nice warm environment. And that's pretty much perfect for mold growth or for fungal growth. And so maintaining a low humidity with that moisture, I think is actually important to making sure we're not um, reactivating mold spores or those sorts of things. And certainly if you deal with enough comic books, you're gonna have one of them that has something on it, even though I obviously check and decline working on uh, books that have obvious mold growth, but there's mold and fungus everywhere that you can't really get rid of. Um, so uh, I don't do that mostly because I found it uh, a little tedious with the clear plastic lid and because I don't like power tooling if I can avoid it. So I've built a rail here um, and this was actually just leftover J channel. I had, uh, cause my brother built a really awesome way for me to display my comic books using this and this fits pretty much a top loader and I got a little lip in my workspace full of comic books um, that are on display there. Uh, but I had some of that material left over and so I just used that to fabricate this rail on top and um, you know, these are just metal plates I found that fit at Home Depot. I just took the light to, to Home Depot and found. And this works out pretty well because I can put the light on there. And it's spaced such that the, the little actual interior lights um, don't overlap. So if you look here, you know, you're getting that full exposure of the bulb. It's just catching the, the outside, but it lets me, um, you know, kind of uh, move those. And I really like this because sometimes I'll treat the interior of a book. And if I'm treating the interior, I might want my two bulbs to be this way of my box because of the device I've got set up uh, that I'll show you. Sometimes if I'm doing the exterior, I might want it this way. Um, sometimes I might have an intense stain on the bottom half of a book and I want to double up these lights and then put them, uh, you know, kind of focused in a certain area. So the ability to kind of do all of this gives me a lot of freedom using this rail that I couldn't get just by cutting a, a lid in the box. And so I think this is one of the little hacks that I've come up with that's a little bit of fun. Um, and so there we go. Now I've got, by the way, these, these do fall in there, but they catch uh, so they don't fall all the way through because the, the thing on top sticks out. So um, I, I do occasionally bump them, but they uh, almost always catch on that lip. So, all right, so then uh, I just have aluminum foil in place to reflect some of that light back down. So I just kind of cover these on up and I have to change out this aluminum foil every couple of weeks because it gets tattered and worn. But I just kind of make a little bit of a bib over the outside here. And I don't need to catch 100% of the light. Most of it's going to get caught anyway. Uh, but that's kind of my outcome there. And then, you know, what I do here is just hit it with the remote and I'm able to turn it on. And so that's pretty much how I do my, my box. Set it for two hours, come on back and it's off and then I can kind of kick it on again uh, and then do another two hours. And so being able to do this with the remote, I think is pretty awesome. Uh, and having the flexibility of that rail is pretty awesome. And I can't remember the name of the individual, but I'm really thankful for the crowdsourced idea to use that aluminum foil tape on the inside because that has been uh, both a game changer and a nice result. All right, so there are a couple of people who've been trying to sell these light boxes. Uh, I think you're better off making your own. You're gonna have a better product. It'll be cheaper for you and you're gonna avoid some of the problems I see with some of those boxes. Uh, namely, I think that they're too small. I don't think that they give enough area for you to work with the book on the inside. And you might ask, why is that? Well, I'll show you some tools in another video I use to be able to treat interiors or to be able to do full wraps. And I don't think that those boxes are set up for it. I also don't think that they have the appropriate clearance for the, the comic book uh, top to bottom. And uh, I really like having the open top because all that humidity can just pour right out of the top of this box. Um, yeah, and so if you're looking to make your own rail, just grab some metal um, sheeting from, or, or metal strips for like mounting a, a, on, a, on a garage wall or anything like that from Lowe's. There's really not no rocket science to it. You just need to get the space between them to be okay for the bulb and, you know, cut loose. So uh, these are my tips here for the light box. I'm a big fan of 
uh, this do it do you, you know DIY uh, solution. I think it gives really great results. There's plenty of volume, and uh, these bulbs I really like compared to all the other options I've seen so far. So hopefully you've gotten some value out of this. If you have questions about how to put it together, let me know. Uh, I'll leave the Captain Mike affiliate link in the the description for the video. So make sure you go you know find the products there. It's really nice just to be able to buy the the wire and the socket and the the Christmas you know, tree remote control. Uh, it doesn't cost that much. And honest to goodness, this is cheaper than what some people are selling their box for online. And you're going to get, I think, way better results out of it. So anyway, take care for that. Leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the uh, Top Comics Pressing channel. Leave me a comment, ask a question. Thank you for your attention. And please share with a friend.